Let me give you some thoughts on family here. Here's an interesting story. Uh, a guy by the name of Max Jukes from New York City or New York State, his children, this is back hundreds or so years ago, 100 years ago or so, his children wanted to attend church, but he refused to take them to church. He had, at the time of this writing, he had 1,026 descendants. Out of those 1,026 descendants, 300 of them ended up in prison for an average of 13 years apiece. 190 became known prostitutes. And 680 of those 1,026 became alcoholics. Conversely, John, Jonathan Edwards, from the same era, gave his life to Jesus. From that time until the writing of this, he had 929 descendants. 430 of them became ministers. 86 became university professors. 13 uh, became university presidents. 75 authored books. Seven were elected to the U.S. Congress, and one became the president of the United States. That's an amazing thing, mm -hmm. isn't it? We believe in family legacy. We're building something around here at Faith Center that we see as generational. We see our church lasting for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. We are just the first pastors of it. We want a legacy to be left when we leave this place, a legacy of greatness, of family, finances, fellowship, fun, all those kind of things. We see, it, we see a legacy of greatness. And so we want you, if you come to Faith Centers, to start thinking generationally of what your family will look like hundreds of years after your death and how will you affect those. Marriages um, have to be maintained. Romans chapter 8 talks about the law of the law of sin and death, but he says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will free us from the law of sin and death. Marriages left to themselves um, will go awry. Anything left to itself will go awry. There's a law in the universe called the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics basically basically says that everything on its own gets worse. If you left a car out in the parking lot, would it evolve into a better car in a million years from now? Or will it be a rust bucket? It would be totally gone in a rust bucket. Because everything by the law of second law of thermodynamics gets worse. That's why it is so amazing to me that we have bought into the, the theory of evolution with the law of second law of thermodynamics because the second law of thermodynamics declares that everything gets worse. You cannot leave anything on its own and it gets better. It has to get worse because that's the second law of thermodynamics. Marriage is the same way. If you don't maintain your marriage, it will get worse. Mm -hmm. And so, do you have some, some mm -hmm. thoughts on that? And so with, but I even go further with that is that we need to maintain ourself and take care of ourselves as far as what are we listening to? What are we paying attention to? What are we meditating upon? Because if we're not taking care of our own self, when we go into the marriage, then we're going to be dysfunctional. We're going to have all kinds of issues and baggage that we're bringing into the marriage. And so we need to become a healthy individual. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly meditating on things. We are, are personally, we are constantly reading books and listening to things that help us to become a better person. And not just because for our marriage, but for ourselves and our walk with God, but for each other as well. And so it's just important that, you know, if we don't do anything, our flesh will take over. Our flesh will rule us, and that can be a bad thing. And so we need to make sure that we're constantly thinking about what we're thinking yeah. about. I've got a commitment to work out two or three times a week. And you know how many times I've worked out in the last two weeks? <laughs> Zero. But I've got a commitment to it. <laughs> Everything gets worse on its own uh, if you don't do something. And, so I, this and, and I had it scheduled. I meant to. You I, scheduled actually, it. I think I did work out once. So. so I've worked out more this week than you have. That's a new one. No, that's a first forever <laughs> of all mankind. So would yeah. you write that down? Put that in the archives of Faith Center Church. It, really, it happened, folks. It happened. First okay. Peter chapter 3, verse 7 says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them, talking about your wife, with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, when he says, again, weaker vessel, doesn't mean weaker in the sense of intellect or in spirituality. It just means in the sense of physical. Uh, men are naturally stronger than women. And I think that's because God wanted men to protect, to have that role of protection. When we first got married, we were in this little tiny house. We had a living room, a bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen. That was it, a little tiny laundry room. Maybe five, 600 square feet, very small. Our bed very, hardly fit into the 
into the thing. And the first thing I thought of when we moved into that house is, you know, people, what side of the bed will you sleep on? Well, I don't know why, just instinctually, I slept on the side with where the door is because I want to be, if somebody comes into my house, I want to be the, the, the line of protection between my wife and I. Even today, I sleep on the side where the door is. So if anybody comes to the house, I want to, I, there's just a natural thing in men to protect like that. Mm-hmm. And, but he says, dwell with them with understanding. And so I think one of the things, we're going to share three points and under one point, there's 14 points, so we're going to go really quick here. But there's a differences between men and women, if you haven't figured that out. And we want to share some of the differences, so we have to dwell with them with understanding. You have, to, you have to understand each other's differences, because if you think a man and a woman are the same, what is this with women going to the bathroom together? I don't get that. I mean, you're at, you're at a restaurant, couples go together, and a woman says, I've got to go to the bathroom. Well, I'll go with you. It's like, if a man did that, I'd slap him, you know? <laughs> but I figured out why. It's because that woman that says, I'll go with you, just the previous week was in there and had no toilet paper or seat cover. So she feels the pain of her girlfriend. She's going to go make sure that that girlfriend's all taken care of and she'll be okay. And the men, we'll just hold it. (laughs) We're not going in there with another guy, you know. (laughs) If we happen to be in there, that's all right, but we're not planning it. Come on. (laughs) Like this, uh, think about this. Uh, If you ask a man, what are you thinking? And he says nothing. He's not lying. (laughs) Hmm. Caitlin, I love your post. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the differences between men and women. Do you have anything else? Or well, you? I did, but it was for a service, and so I don't know if I can duplicate it. Yeah, probably, probably not. <laughs> All right. So here's some thoughts, and this is um, seven things every woman wants and needs, for, or every man needs from her. Uh, is it woman? Yeah, every woman needs from her <laughs> husband. I'm trying to read it. So seven things every woman wants and needs from her husband. Number one, and these are the order of their importance. Number one is love, affection, attention, and communication. So all that being one, probably love would be the key word. Love, affection, attention, and communication. Number two, we want, women want value, identity, self-esteem, uniqueness from their husband. They want, to, want him to give that to her or help with that. Number three would be security. Um, again, physical security and protection. Number four, friendship, uh, recreation, companionship. Number five, now notice where this is at. Number five would be sexual fulfillment. That's number five on the ladies' list. Where do you think it lies on the men's list? We'll, we'll find out. All seven. All seven is correct. <laughs> That's right. No, it's all eight. <laughs> oh. Um, so sexual fulfillment, romance, intimacy, number five. Six is a future, a vision, direction, leadership. Seven, provision, wealth, comfort, financial security. So those are in order of their importance. Um, go ahead if, you're just, if you have anything there. So I'll, otherwise I'll just move on. No, and I think those are, I mean, I mean, obviously there's different types of personalities, different people that like things differently. You know, you might be a gift type of person. You're, what is your love language? You know, acts of service or whatever. And so um, finding out what is those triggers for you. But, you know, I think all of this is a very well-rounded list, and it's just very good to realize that we need just engage in our spouse and to, to pay attention to what their needs are. And obviously if there's, if there's, I think if there's tension in your household and there's um, just tension, that if you will really, obviously there's a lack of attention if there's tension in your household. And so just really engaging into that to figure out what makes your household work. What is your relationship within your spouse? And I think you've been really, you're a good, I believe you're a good example with all those things and just being um, wow. just very kind. Really? Thank you. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, just it's, and it's not just learned over a week period of time or over a year period of time. And we've been married for 31 years. We've learned how to do these things over the yeah. years. And so it's, it's think, always evolving into the, I think where, where the problem comes is when the, the male or the female thinks that the number one priority is the same as his priority, number mm-hmm. one priority. And that's where the problem lies. There's the differences. Love and affection and attention is number one for ladies. We want, they want love, affection, and attention. Now, down to the guys, believe it or not, sex is not number one. It's very high on the list, but it's not number one. Number one is encouragement or a cheerleader who's confident in him. We want our, our women to be confident in, in us. We want them to, to um, you know, we want them to be a great cheerleader for us. And I have to say, in, in 31 years of marriage, my wife has never spoken a negative word in my life. Never in 31 years spoken a negative thing to me ever. 
Think about that. In 31 years, she's never spoken a negative word to me in the sense of putting me down, ever. She's always, hundreds of times, she's lifted me up, but never, ever put me down. And that's probably number one for guys. Number two is sexual, sexually open and free. Um, physically, you know, we want to be, just should have an open and free sexual relationship. We're pretty honest here on, at, at church. And if you, I mean, if you've got to turn the lights out and, you know, I mean, turn them lights on, man. Come on, you know. I mean. I think the lights are off because there, there's uncomfortableness. And so well, that's what I'm saying. we got to get over that yeah. because we, we can't be all timid and shy. You're married. Come on, man. You're married. Mm -hmm. And uh, so turn them lights on, baby. Turn them lights on. <laughs> turn the lights on. The party is beginning. <laughs> No, 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 no parties. I think I just wrote a song that's going to go out throughout the world from Faith Center Church. Okay. Turn the lights on, the party's just beginning. Joel can play the steel guitar with you and oh, yeah. sing. Or that one hot mama. <laughs> Have you heard that song? Gosh. Let's turn this room into a sauna. The first time I heard that song, we were, was it Trace Atkins? Yeah. So he, we were in some store and we walk out and Glenn goes, I said, did you hear that song? He goes, I did. I was like, wow. Let's play it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that song. Good. That's my, that's one of my top five of all time. <laughs> but you got to be sexually open with, I mean, it should be, you, you should have a, a, a really, your sex life should be not all timid and shy and weird. It should be should be, be able to just communicate. Well, and it's enjoy. a celebration of your marriage. It is. It's mm -hmm. a celebration of your marriage. You should just be able to enjoy each other. Mm -hmm. Number three would be intelligence, communicator. Um, I use the word not spacey, you know. Be an intelligent communicator. Um, you know, this is amazing to me, but God created man in his own image and after his own likeness. He didn't create a, a, he didn't create a being that he couldn't have fellowship with. So mm -hmm. he created us very intelligent. And we need to speak along those lines. And, not, and, and I think sometimes we just get lazy in our speech and different things like that. But, but uh, my wife's very intelligent and we have good communications along that lines. Number four is discipline manager of the family, financially self-control, right along that thing. And uh, number five, secure helpmate, not looking for a better career green, in greener pastures. Number six, fun, happy, willing to participate. And I think for Theresa, that's, for, for Theresa, what I love about her, and it's not so much, it's probably more when we were young and Joel was young, but Joel and I loved to camp up on a, uh, um, on a lake up on the side of Mount Adams. And I mean, there is mosquitoes old enough to vote up there <laughs> and, and they're in abundance mm -hmm. up there. And yeah. Theresa just would come right in and camp with us. There's lots of families that would be with us. Yeah, we'd have a lot one of time. several families. Yeah, one time, yeah. <laughs> But they, but Theresa would get right in there and, and cook and, and different things. We'd be up there without, there was no showers up there and we'd have to, you know, set up a little thing. But she'd get right in there with that. And, you know, Theresa and I'll take off and, and we used to go on motorcycle rides with Mar Mylon Lefevre and the Newsboys guys, you know, from the Newsboys singing group. And we'd fly into Vegas and then we'd go off for a week and she'd get right on the back of that motorcycle and take off with us and always, always willing to participate. And if, if all you always say is, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Eh, I think you just have to kind of give in on some of those things sometimes. So. And I think with, uh, with us doing that, though, we were creating memories with Joel. Yeah. And some of it, we went camping because we didn't have any money to do anything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And so it was a cheap vacation. We could go. We went. We used to go down to Sand Lake for like eight years, I think. We rode four-wheelers or three-wheelers three wheelers at back the time. Then, yeah. With Donnie and Patty, I think, is who we started going with. And so there, there was always things that we would try to do as a family to do a family vacation. Good memories. That were good memories. We would there were low um, budget things, but would create good memories. And now we don't have to necessarily go camping. We no. could, but we can go find other things to do, like New and, York City and yeah. you know and cruises. So it's just and, those seasons of time that you know, especially with your kids are young because you want to do a family vacation. So finding things that you can do together to make. Those I think fun I think it's good memories. But you were willing to participate in that, you know. And then finally, good home homemaker and mother. Um, I always tell people this. My my home is a house without Theresa, but it's a home. Theresa makes it a home with her touch. And we got candles burning all. I'm always blowing out candles. And <laughs> did, you, did you blow out, you know, the 83 candles today? Because, you know, what, why, what did I ever have a candle? What would I ever have a candle for? And we got 68 of them in our house, you know. That's just in the front room. And, and there's always candles. There's always candles. I think she has a shrine to Buddha up there or something. I don't know, you know. I'm just kidding. But, um, but you know but candles and, and and flowers and 
you know, rugs and be, and I just like, you know, please throw some furniture up there and give me a big TV and I'm We probably fine. still have those brick things with a piece of wood across for our entertainment center, probably, if you were... What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> so, but she makes our house a home, so... So that's number one is understand the differences. You have to really understand each other's differences. And then number two and three won't take us that long. I think number two is really important. These are just three basics for marital relationships. Understand differences. Number two is make sure you stay, gra- or make sure you stay um, in gratitude for your spouse. Uh, y- the worst thing you can do is take each other for granted and, and not celebrate one another and you sh- you, you got to always have an atti- attitude of gratitude and express that for your spouse express it to them and express it publicly to others while they're around and i think that does a lot a long way to help with that so, mm-hmm. so we just need to talk about what we like and we don't like what pastor glenn said but one of the things i was listening to yesterday with joyce meyer on a podcast and she said we get born again but does our is our mouth saved along with that because mm. i think sometimes we are still saying the old way or we're talking harshly or talking mean or whatever in our relationship in our marriage and so we just need to really pay attention to what we're saying because our words are containers they're going to either bring life to the situation or they're going to bring death and so we need to make sure they're always creating life they were always putting good things into the relationship and wendy treat um posted this a while ago she tweeted this it says marriage wisdom don't say the thing that you want to get off of your chest. Think on the cool stuff of your mates. Smile and appreciate them. And so it's just important for us to think about the positive things. Think about the good yeah. things that our spouse does. Even if you're having, you're just, this is a whole shift in your thinking and you're having a hard time coming up with those things, find just one or two things that you are positive, that you're standing in your belief, and that you're, that you're complimenting them on, and then that list will grow. Yeah, I think that's so, so vital. And then, um, you know, Psalm 22 says this, God inhabits praise God inhabits praise the word inhabits there the highest form of that Hebrew word is literally the word Mary or and he 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 gets covenant relationship there's a there's a coming together in praise so if I'm if now think about this now if I um, if I look at Seth and you know Seth's our youth guy on the front row here and and I walk into uh, my office is Seth come here I want to meet with you and I say Seth you suck you're the worst youth pastor I've ever had I don't know why I've kept you around you're 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 terrible you handle people wrong you're you're not good with the kids you just ultimately are just just suck that's pretty harsh isn't it mm-hmm. well but if nobody I nobody wants to be there when no, you're doing that either well of course not yeah but what what is God did God inhabit that or would mm-hmm. God inhabit this man I'm so impressed with the way the youth is going mm-hmm. and your leadership team is amazing mm-hmm. man the kids are just getting set free and delivered Amen. which one did God inhabit mm-hmm. there's something about when you praise somebody you, you you can only God can be worshiped but you can praise somebody when you praise somebody God inhabits our praise so if you want a a, a household full of God have a household full of praise. Mm-hmm. That's good. Want a f- household full of God? Have a household full of praise. That's good. Praise your spouse. Praise your kids. You know, we tried to do things like with Joel, instead of just criticizing Joel when he was growing up, we wouldn't say like, "You, you're a, that's a, you're an idiot." What in the world? You're that's a, you're an idiot. I always just sit there and say, Joel, you are the one of the smartest young men I've ever encountered in my life. You are an amazing young man. What caused you to make such a dumb mistake as smart as you are? There's, there's, we're saying the same thing, but one way approach it, we're approaching it with praise and love. The other way, we're approaching it with just total con- condemnatory mm-hmm. stuff. So fill your household full of gratitude and praise. Amen. Go a long ways. Number three, lastly, is time together. Um, not, just, not just time, but um, not just time together, but I think it's important that you know, and not just, like I say, not just in the sexual relationship, but you need to spend time with your spouse. People say, well, we spend quality time, not quantity time. Quantity is found in quality. Quality is found in quantity. So make sure you spend time. Theresa and I love being together, and that's the thing. We love being together. And if you don't love being together, then you've got to figure something out. You've got to, you've got to get some marriage seminars. You've got, to, you've got to hear these things. You've got to get better at that because time together is so vital. We work together, so we spend 
the, the evenings at home, and this is, I say this over and over again, I'll keep re re reiterating this. We do not reward at our household long hours at church. And, and we do not, that's not a positive. Whenever I see a staff member or, or a volunteer that feels like that they're so important that they have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours at, at work or their church, they have a self-image problem that they're getting their, um, they're getting their um, props, if you will, or their image from long hours and, being, and people needing them and being needed by a boss or whatever or by a work situation. And we refuse to get our self-image from work. We want to give our self-image from God Amen. himself. And so our family comes first, and probably by 5 o'clock every night, almost every night, we're together at home. And if we're not, we're doing something together, shopping or doing something. Sometimes we'll work out in the evening separately or whatever. But most of the time, by 5 or 6 o'clock, we're at home, and we don't sit there and, you know, look at each other and hold each other's hand <laughs> talk all night long. <laughs> I love you, babe. Mm, you know, please, you know, gag me, you know. But, um, I mean, for a minute it'd be all right, but not for a long period. But we just sit, you know, she sits in a chair. I you know, kind of take the, the couch and I might read a book, watch a little the Olympics and, you know, the TV's going, she's working on her stuff. We're talking back and forth, checking Facebook out, but we're together. Mm -hmm. And like, we'll go shopping and we, we like, we'll go shopping. We live out by, um, up on the 192nd area up there and then kind of towards Camas. And, and every time we go and we shop or grocery shop or whatever, go to, you know, whatever, and we'll say, hey, let's take a drive around the lake. And so we, we go into Camas, uh, you know, the back way there, and we drive around Lacamas Lake, and then we always tell people, you know, that's our lake, and we let a few people use it every once in a while. <laughs> and, but, but that's just our drive. And almost, I would say 50% of the time, we're coming back that way. Let's take a drive around the lake, and unless we got something frozen in the car or something, but we drive all the way around the lake. We almost did, was it the other night? We almost did it, but we were in separate cars. Said, so you want to drive around the lake? Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite the same. Not this, quite the same way, so. <laughs> yeah, I was like, we could talk on the phone all the <laughs> yeah, way around. Talk and drive around it. But, what if but, you should have done it? I think of it is, guys, it's not, you know, it's not expensive vacations. Mm -hmm. It's driving around the lake. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, let's, let's take a drive up the gorge. I don't want to oh, get off the couch and go do something, you know, do something, go, go. Well, you know, we can't afford a new house, but we want to buy one some day. So go look at houses, yeah. go We've dream. We've done that a lot. We've done that a lot. We dream all the time. We dream together. We think together. We, we're always got something where we're moving towards things. Mm -hmm. And, and now we're, you know, thinking about grandkids and what we're going to leave them. And, and, uh, you know, we're just, we're, we're talking that way all the time. And, it's just, it's, I love being married to my wife. I love being I love married, being married to, my to my wife. You too. And it's been, it's been an awesome 31 years. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it has to do with just the little tiny maintenance things that we do from day to right. day. So I want to just encourage you. You have anything else, Ben? For yeah, two couple things. You know, with we now with us doing different trips and stuff, we, you know, we'll sit down and we'll talk about, I was like, what do you want to do this year? Or what do you, you know, one year we pretty much always go and do the same thing. But then the in-between year, we're like, let's, what, what do you want to do? And so we talk about it. And there's been times we've totally done things that Glenn wants to do. And there's been times we will, that we've, I mean, not totally what you want to do, but things that you like to do. And then name one. Well, I can't now that I've said this example. <laughs> we generally always agree. So I was trying to give people that do that an out. <laughs> we try our vacation. We take a vacation. And we'll take a, you know, some time off at some time. But most of the time we take a vacation in October. And because of, you know, we've invested in real estate and different things. And so we go to New York City every other year. That's mm -hmm. just our thing now. We love New York City. We go there and we hang out. and We, we shop you know, and go play and, and, and sightsee and go for We're there for four or five but days. But we've done things. We're like, okay, it was an example. It wasn't that I didn't like doing it, but going and doing motorcycle rides. And we would do that. It wasn't my favorite thing to do, but it was fun going and hanging out with the people who were doing until you thought I, of one, didn't you? Until, yeah, I did. Until, you got, until, until I had heat stroke. And that's like, eh, I don't think I want to go to that. I yeah. don't want to do that anymore. But so we just kind of find it. But the, my th my point is, is when you're spending time together, is find things that you like to do together. Mm -hmm. You know, make it a habit to sit down and say, well, do you want to, we talk about, you know, almost every day we're like, well, what do you go have going today? Well, we can go do that together. Or we, you know, and so we're mm -hmm. constantly, that's just day to day things. And this will be her text to me. It'll be, it'll say something like, hey, I got to go to the store. You want me to come home and get you before I go to the store? And I said, you know, yes or no. And, and so a lot of times, yeah, come and get me. And blah, blah, blah. 
And we do. We just try to do things together. I mean, we. But, van, but vacations, we really. I mean, we do what we want to do together because we're going to spend time together. So it's just yeah. really important. So to make that a priority. Yeah. And then this, I saw this. I don't even remember. Where I got it. it says, God. Uh, this is a prayer starter. It says, God, I want to enjoy my spouse, even when marriage is difficult. Help me to find joy and have fun with them by seeing them the way you do. And so we just need. It's to not work. hard for you though, is it? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So marriage is great, but you there's work that needs to be done and just to constantly work on yourself to work on your marriage. Good. You guys get anything out of that? Yeah. So what our thing, our thing, guys, is we just want, it don't matter, we don't care where you've been, divorce, that's not our issue. We care about where you're going mm -hmm. and the legacy that you're going to leave. I'm thinking about a thousand-year reign of Faith Center Church. Are you with me? Listen, why not? Why not a thousand years from now? They, may, they probably won't even know who I, I was, and I'm fine with that. Matter of fact, the, 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 the less I, you know my name, the better anymore. I used to want a name, now I don't care. But for me, I'll, let's build a legacy of the guy like Jonathan Edwards that, that, you know, he sacrificed something for his family. In America today, it seems like, well, I'm just not happy in this relationship. You know? You're in it right now. Get over yourself. Mm -hmm. Figure out a way to be happy. And so don't worry. Be happy. Because yeah, I think so many times with, with divorce, there's, sometimes there's big deal breakers, but sometimes the little things that shouldn't be a deal breaker become the deal breaker because it's just tired of things building up. Mm -hmm. And so if you will, and I think it's because they've started counting wrong, but if you'll start counting correctly and start seeing the way God sees that person, then you can have a great marriage and just change it and make it good. Something on my sleeve there. I know what you do. I don't know. It's white. Probably though. wiped your arm with your nose. Probably, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> no, I would just do this. Oh, gross. So. Yuck. <laughs> well, that's reality, so. Why don't you pray for our families? Let's pray for our families. And you singles now, singles too. I'm going to pray for singles. And, you know, the thing that I, I think that one of the reasons why Theresa and I have done well in our marriage is because at my Bible school, we had a whole semester class about this kind of stuff, and I learned a lot. Because if you did, if you did marriage the way my dad did marriage, is my mom came home, my dad came home, they both worked eight hours a day, and my mom came home and did everything, and my dad sat on the, on the couch and drank beer. And um, I thought, that probably, and, they, and my dad, dad was married four times. And and multiple affairs and I thought I just don't want to do it that way so let's build a legacy of greatness amen no matter where you're from no matter what you've done it doesn't matter let's get on from there at this point forward let's get on with lives amen. pray for our marriages okay. husbands and wives you're sitting there grab your spouse's hand Father God we just yes. thank you for this time we just thank you Holy Spirit that you are taking the words that we've spoken and you're ministering to every single ear and heart here Father God Father God, if there's marriages that are in, in trouble or in hard times, we just thank you, Father, that yes. they will see their spouse as you see them. Father God, I thank you that you'll bring change to those relationships, bring healing to those relationships, that they will be able to go forward and have a victory. Father God, we just thank you for strong families, strong marriages. Thank you that as we grow together, that we'll continually work on ourselves as we work on our marriage together. Give us creative ideas. Give us good books or good things that we can watch to listen to. Father God, to bring change to our relationships because Father God, we know that you are pleased with marriages and so we just want to be the best marriages we can possibly be and we just thank you in Jesus' Pray name. for singles right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pray for all of our singles. First off, give them wisdom yes. that they need to be whole in their singleness, Father, before they get married so they don't bring baggage into the next yes. marriage. So we pray for them. Give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you, Lord, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. They know the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. The spirit of wisdom is upon them, Father, to make the right decisions. And Father, we just thank you for everything you're doing at Faith Center Church. In the name of Jesus, we thank pray. You, Lord. Any thank prayer you. requests? Hand me some prayer requests there, guys. Just pray over these real quick. You guys text in these heart conditions. Finances for grandmother, healing, sound mind. Father, we just thank you for these requests. Thank you. All these requests are met. Finances coming in. Sound mind. Relationships, Father. We just call these healthy and whole. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Church, if you agree with that, say amen. 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 Bless you guys. Have, Have a, a great, great Sunday.